Okay, um, here we are at the part three um, LED upgrade uh, for this Atherin Genesis uh, locomotive. Uh, I'm going to show you what I've done so far. Um, in the last episode, I was getting ready to pull out the uh, 1.5 volt bulbs. This was them here. Uh, and then the ditch lights. These were the two bulbs that were up inside the ditch lights. What I did was I cut this off, was able to pull this out using uh, the tip of my X-Acto knife up inside underneath here. And what I did was that they actually came out, this is probably one of the easiest locomotives that that came out. Was. Um, and once I got the bulb out, I just pulled this right through and pulled it out of the locomotive. Um, and that made room up inside the ditch light housing for the uh, the LED. Um, so yeah, my voice is a little bit hoarse, uh, and like I said, sorry for the delay getting this third part out. But I had a little bit of a sinus infection, hurt my lower back the other uh, the other day. So um, here we are with part three. So the other thing I want to mention, um, not everybody has a a stand like this one here but this stand comes in real handy for me for um, doing my LED upgrade especially on the ditch lights and I'll show you uh, what I mean let me pause this and I'll be right back okay so here's the stand um, that I acquired a couple of years back I'm not sure who makes it where it comes from but for me, it comes in real handy, and it holds my locomotive shell um, for putting the uh, the ditch lights in and, and the headlights and things like that. So I always try to test everything, and when you put your ditch lights in these locomotives, you definitely want to have them on, so that way you can see and center that light as the glue dries, and then find something to hold the wiring. It's going to want to move around on you. Um, but it really comes in handy to have these lit up when you are installing them in the locomotive. At least it is for me. Uh, and then I also label them. This one here has a D on it, so I know those wires are all the ditch lights. This one I had an H on it. Uh, that's the one for the headlights. And then it all runs off, uh, in one of my other videos, a 9-volt battery with a 1,000-ohm resistor. Uh, just to test the lights and make sure they work. And you can see they work pretty well. Everything looks nice and square, all the lights all the same color, the same brightness. And I did uh, the exact same technique for putting in the, um, the rear headlights. Okay, so I'm going to show you on the inside uh, of the locomotive here. Um, this little piece of black tape was actually already in here. I just reused it to try to hold the wiring in place and up inside. I used a little bit of CA gel to hold the headlights in place. It bonds pretty quickly. Uh, there you go, you can see it. So there's the LED for the headlights. And then I ran the wiring for the ditch lights the same way the uh, OEM was. It goes down through this little hole and then through this little loop. Uh, and then runs out to the locomotive. On the rear, same same idea. You can see the, um, the LEDs right there. Use CA gel. Glued them in place, took a few seconds of just holding them in place with uh, a pair of tweezers or even an X-Acto knife, um, and those are pretty permanent now. All right. Here's the um, graphic illustration for wiring up the LEDs to a soundboard. This is actually a Tsunami soundboard uh, put out by Soundtracks. And if you go on the internet and, and type in, uh, you know, how to wire LEDs to a, a locomotive board, no matter what board the locomotive has in it, they all have a little bit of differences to them, but the idea is basically all the same. You definitely want to use resistors when you hook up to a Tsunami board. There's other uh, manufacturers out there that already have resistors on the board, so you definitely want to do a little bit of research. Um, and you can see on on here there is a 14 watt 
uh, excuse me, 14 volt common connection on this uh, tsunami soundboard. So you're going to need to have some basic um, soldering skills to do this. I use a 30 watt iron. Uh, any more than that, you want to be careful because you could damage the soundboard. Um, but you need to put and solder a wire to that 14 volt, which is right here. And then in my other video, I explained how I do the resistors. Zoom back out a little bit here. So the resistors are, are soldered directly to the board. So this is the front headlight, rear headlights, and the ditch lights are off on one of your functions, uh, F5 or F6. And once again, I did solder all the connections on here. I don't keep the plastic ones because over time they could fail. So you still need a little more soldering skills just to get these, uh, these soldering connections on here. That way you'll know that if anything's going on, it's, hopefully it's not from where you soldered your wires. Just make sure that there's no little frayed wires that contact anything on the board or a cross connection because uh, that could be bad. Um, so yeah, so that's all I've done so far. And then I used some black electrical tape. Just kind of hold the wires in place. I put a small piece here so I don't short out the board with the resistors. Same with a little piece here and a little piece underneath right there that you can see for the, um, for the uh, dish lights. That's where I'm at so far. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to Leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. So the next thing to do with this locomotive is going to be actually wiring all these connections for the LEDs to the board. Real easy to do. Just make sure that you're getting your, your positive, negative, common, whatever you want to call it, correct. Uh, test it first with... Um, with a 9 volt, make sure that the light and the LED lights up and you know that that's the end that goes to the resistor. And the, uh, it's usually with the LEDs, at least the ones I use, it's really easy. The longer wire is the common or the positive, uh, and the shorter wire goes to the resistor, negative. Uh, so, there you have it. Uh, I'm going to get this all soldered up and then hopefully get the locomotive back together and put on the tracks. I hope this helped a lot of people. Uh, you know, I, I was very scared at first to even take a locomotive apart, especially the kind of money we spend on things, uh, these things nowadays. Um, but it, it really, it really helps in, enhance the locomotive, I think. And and having not to have to take the shell apart all the time to change bulbs is definitely going to be a plus. All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I'll get this thing all soldered up, put together, and we'll get it on the track and give it a try in my next video. All right, thank you.